on your side with breaking news and the Tri-State's most accurate forecast. This is 9 News at 5.30. Tonight, remembering 9-11, we take you to New York, where 9-11 families are focusing on the future as a way of remembering the past. And the nation is on alert after a terror threat related to the 10th anniversary. 9 News anchor Brendan Keefe is joining us now live from the World Trade Center site in Lower Manhattan. Brendan, first, good evening. And are you seeing tighter security there? Good evening, Tanya. Good evening, Clyde. Yes, we are seeing tight security here, but that is nothing new in New York City these last 10 years. The city never lowered its terror alert like so many other places in America. So what we're seeing here may be interesting and new for out-of-town media who hasn't seen it before. But I'll tell you from experience, we saw this over the last 10 years here since September 11th. And remember, two presidents are already scheduled to be here, both George W. Bush and President Obama. So security was already tight on this anniversary. That credible threat has everyone worried, of course. Tonight, though, the memorial is ready. The families are ready. This site is ready to mark the 10th anniversary. We can no longer call this ground zero. It is the World Trade Center site because the pit is gone and the World Trade Center is rising once again. Water cascades into two acre-sized openings at the World Trade Center site. These are the precise footprints of the Twin Towers. At night, the waterfalls are backlit by beams shooting through the curtains of water. And when conditions are just right, two squares are projected onto the clouds above. For that moment, the Twin Towers once again touch the sky. I've been down there. I, I've listened to the waterfalls. There is no way to describe what it feels like. Lee Ielpi spent months on the pile looking for his own son, FDNY firefighter Jonathan Ielpi. This is Jonathan's turnout coat. He was among just 174 intact bodies recovered out of 2,752 killed here. Nearly half the 9-11 families have received no remains at all, so this is their final resting place. Those 1,122 people that are still missing, well, their families only know one thing for sure. This is where they were murdered. This is where their souls still are, because this is sacred ground. This is hollowed ground. There are 400 trees in the Memorial Plaza, transplanted from around New York, Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and Washington, D.C. But there is a lone pear tree that stands out in the middle of these new oaks. Pulled from the wreckage of the World Trade Center, it was nursed back to health. And now it stands here again as a testament to survival and rebirth. And what's beautiful with that tree is in the springtime it blooms. It's the only tree that'll bloom there. For six full years, little happened at this site. It remained an open wound. But they've been working around the clock, even through the night, for a few years now to make sure the memorial is ready for the families on 9-11-11. The pit has been filled with hope. Cold steel and brute force have created a beautiful and lasting testament to the American spirit. To see just how far we've come, take a look at this video I shot here at the site in 2001, and now the very same spot a decade later. Every day, the new World Trade Center climbs higher above the site. Surrounding the waterfalls and the footprints of the towers, you see the names of every person killed on 9-11 etched into bronze, not alphabetically or randomly. Friends, firefighters, and flight crews are listed together. The panels are also heated, so they will never be cold to the touch. It looks beautiful to me, the waterfalls and the names. Uh, simple, elegant, and respectful. George Siller's brother Stephen was a firefighter who ran two miles through the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel in full gear to rescue people from the burning towers. He was never found. Now every September, runners follow in his footsteps in the Tunnel to Towers race. There's so many good people in America, and it's, it's so touching to see how they care, and they don't forget. And we're back now live. You're looking at the World Trade Center site here. This is the South Tower reflecting pool. 
the waterfalls and also some security personnel getting ready for the 9-11 families. You're going to hear more about that Tunnel to Towers race and about Lee Ialfi's tribute to his son on Sunday. That is when the memorial opens to the 9-11 families. Then the public who have reserved passes in advance will have access beginning Monday, September 12th. The 9-11 Museum, which is underneath the memorial, goes down 70 feet down to bedrock, will not open for a year from now. Uh, and we'll also see World Trade Center 1 in the next year topping out at 1,776 feet in the air. So a lot more to be done here, but certainly there is a sense, absolutely, you cannot call this ground zero anymore. Guys? You know, Brendan, truly a lovely and touching story that you just told. Now, is it true, because we've been hearing this, but is it true that first responders from 9-11 are not going to be allowed into the ceremony on Sunday? Unfortunately, that is true, Tanya. Uh, the first responders, including the NYPD and the FDNY, if the NYPD isn't assigned to work here today, oh, those 36,000 officers, they're not welcome. The FDNY, they're not welcome. Firefighters from out of town, rescuers, EMTs, the construction workers who work the pile, they're not welcome. When you add up all the people, it could be up to 90,000 people. The city said there just wasn't the space. Others said surely something could have, uh, some accommodation could be made. Who's invited? Of course, the 9-11 family members and politicians. That certainly ruffled some feathers. And one thought, a first responder here in New York as a friend of mine said, yeah, we weren't invited 10 years ago either. We just showed up. They sure did, and we are so glad that they did. Well done. Brendan, we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks. Thanks. Now, children not even alive.